How's it going everyone? I'm going to be doing a quick video today comparing a couple of uh, LPVOs or low power variable optics. This is the 1 to 10 power at a ball and uh, I'm going to be talking about the optic that this replaced which was uh, a Trigicon AccuPower 1 to 8 power scope. Um, I'm just going to go over the pros and cons of both and talk about why I switched and uh, then discuss a couple other options towards the end of the video. All right, first off, I'm gonna talk about the Trigicon because that was the optic I had prior to uh, having the Attaball on this and um, it'll kind of get into why I switched away from it and sold it. Okay, so first thing that I liked when I got the optic and I put some rounds through it was the reticle. I immediately noticed that it was very easy for my eye to pick it up. This is kind of a depiction of what the uh, illuminated part of the reticle looked like. Hopefully you can see that on the video. Um, but basically it's a ring with a little crosshair in the middle um, you could you could turn it to illuminated, like I said, um, but it's a similar concept to like the EOTech type reticle where you have a dot and then like a larger ring around it. You can use the bottom of that ring at close range to um, help with that like offset of your optic above the bore um, so your shots are still on target and uh, relatively accurate at close ranges, right? So at CQB distance on one power, the scope was excellent. Um, it had a pretty good field of view, and uh, again, the reticle was super easy to use. Another thing I liked about the optic is that in the time that I had it, it was very durable. I had it, I want to say, for two years, and uh, I abuse my gear. I do not treat any of it nicely, um, and it held up. It held up great. Um, not a single issue with it, uh, and I was never worried about it banging it around, hitting it on rocks or on my truck or like whatever I was doing. Never had any issues and never had a second thought about it basically. Um, didn't have to worry about that. And that's something that Trigicon's known for. So um, good on them for that, right? Now let's go over to the con side. The reason that I got rid of this optic is because at high power, when I was on like say eight power, full power on the optic, the eye box on the optic was unusable can't see fucking shit out of this thing. And what I mean by that is that um, perhaps shooting from a bench or something like that where I could be in a very perfect position and still behind the scope, you could probably see through it. And I know there's a lot of reviews um, where the people don't have this issue, but um, I think a lot of them aren't doing the kind of shooting that uh, I do frequently. And um, they're shooting from more um, static and like comfortable positions basically where they can get behind the rifle perfectly and you know have that ideal position well i found that anytime i wasn't in an ideal position like that where i was kind of like you know out in the woods you know you may lay down in the prone but the ground isn't flat you know you might be kind of like at a weird angle or something like that just because of the terrain or um you know shooting from behind cover and stuff like that or if you're kind of like on your side it was very difficult to see through the scope and get a clear picture. You would constantly have scope shadow and you'd be like fishing for that like view basically because the eye box was so sensitive. I would find myself often dialing it down to six or even four power to um, basically make the thing be usable. And while, yeah, I can shoot at that, you know, just fine. At the end of the day, I should have just gotten a four power or a six power scope if that's you know, if that's an issue and the scope can't really shoot at eight power truly um, in realistic scenarios, then uh, to me it's not a true eight power optic, it's not usable, and uh, it's not worth my time, right? And then the real finishing factor on this was the cost. It was about $1,400 when I bought it, somewhere around there, maybe $1,300, but um, and I think it retails for around $1,700, but... Um, at the end of the day, I had shot um, Vortex Strike Eagles and stuff like that, one to six power scopes that were 300 bucks that outperformed it. And uh, at the end of the day, I was like, I'm gonna dish this thing and get something that I know works, right? If the optic had been perhaps not ideal, but still usable, I would have kept it because frankly, for me, I don't like changing gear out constantly. Um, I'm not into that kind of stuff. I like having consistent, um, you know, consistent pieces of gear for a long period of time that I know I can rely on. So um, I didn't change it out lightly 
and uh, I only changed it out because literally every time I took out the rifle, it pissed me off. <laughs> and uh, I actually found, and you can probably see in a lot of my earlier videos, I'm shooting my AR pistol with a red dot on it, which I was originally on this rifle before I bought that gun. Um, and I was pretty much exclusively shooting my AR pistol with a red dot on it. And I was like, why am I doing this? And then I kind of thought about it more and I was like, well, I hate that optic so much. That's really like what it came down to. And I was like, all right, time to make a change. So I went on a search and I found this. Let's get into the Attaball next. First off, the pros. Um, the main pro of this optic is it had an extremely similar reticle. You can see right here, I kind of drew it out again, roughly. Hopefully you can see that. Um, very similar reticle style. Um, instead of kind of like rounded, like cut up circle, quartered circle, um, they're actually like kind of just angled. It's like a square essentially turned on its side, 45 degrees, but um, similar concept with a center dot. Um, you can use it the same way, basically, uh, which is a really good thing. Again, all the same advantages that I said about the Trijicon reticle, they apply to this reticle, which is awesome. Another pro of the Attaball is that it goes to a higher power. It goes to 10 power. And unlike with the Trijicon, the iBox is usable at that power. Is it difficult? Yes, all scopes are difficult to see at their highest setting. You know, there's always gonna be a little bit of like, hey, it's kind of hard to find that, but this is actually usable at full power versus the Trijicon was like, constantly made me frustrated basically. Um, this one's usable and I never have a problem with it. So that's pretty much my goal with any piece of gear is I don't wanna notice it. It should do its job it should do whatever function that I bought it to do, and I shouldn't really notice it being there. That's, to me, the mark of a real good piece of gear. And that's what this optic does. Another pro is uh, the cost. This scope cost me somewhere around $700, maybe a little more, but um, I'm sure if you shop around for sales and things like that, you can probably even get it under that. An added benefit that I didn't talk about with the Trijicon is it's a little bit heavy, it's 25 ounces versus the Attaball is 21 ounces. Now, that being said, I never noticed the Trijicon being overly heavy or anything like that. I don't really care about carrying a little bit of extra weight. That's not a huge deal as long as the uh, component or whatever I'm carrying is giving me the capability I want it to. But when it's overly heavy and it's not doing what I want it to do, it's time to ditch it, right? <clears throat> so, you say four ounces, with this over the Trijicon. Another quick thing I want to note about uh, both of the both of the optics actually is that they both had um, on the illuminator knob between each level of illumination there's an off switch so you don't have to turn the illumination all the way down to zero to turn it off you can just have it set between like two illumination settings that are um, you know what you're maybe most likely going to use and then you only have to click it one up or down and you'll be at least close to the illumination that you want in um, whatever scenario that you're prepping your gun for, right? All right, and over to the cons for the Attaball. None so far. I haven't had a single issue with it. Um, again, it's been extremely durable as well. Um, again, bouncing it off rocks and doing all kinds of shit to it, uh, not a problem. It hasn't uh, caused me any issues and uh, it's shot everything I needed it to shoot. Um, easy to adjust, all that good stuff, right? Everything a good quality optic should be, right? And uh, in this day and age, a quality optic doesn't actually have to cost thousands of dollars. Um, there are some really good offerings out there, not just this. And uh, this isn't meant to be an Attaball commercial or something like that. I bought this optic with my own money. I'm not affiliated with them. I'm not affiliated with Trijicon. I'm not affiliated with anybody, um, as you should probably know by now if you're watching my videos. <clears throat> I don't do any of that kind of stuff. But uh, what I do want is gear that works. And uh, when I find a piece of gear that does really work and does its job really well at a good price point, I'm gonna tell you guys about it. So um, that's why I recommend the scope so much. All right, in terms of a couple of uh, other optics that I recommend that are kind of also LPVOs like this, um, going on the low end, um, if you want something that's budget, Vortex Strike Eagle. 
Um, they're awesome. They're super cheap. You can get them for 300 bucks or less. Um, super easy to use, uh, and they're going to do 99% of what you're going to need, right? Um, so I have no hesitation recommending those. I've shot them a ton, and uh, they're great. On the high end, if you want something nicer than this Atoball, um, really the only real high-end LPVOs I have a lot of experience with is uh, I used a Trijicon VCOG overseas when I was in uh, First Ranger Battalion. Um, I used that for quite a bit. It was all right, but not um, not worth the price that you would end up paying for one of those things. They're extremely expensive, and uh, while it was okay, it's probably still not as good as this optic, and uh, I wouldn't recommend that. The other high-end low-powered variable optic I've used a ton is the uh, Vortex 1 to 6, whatever it is, uh, Razer HD2. Um, really good optic, incredibly clear glass, and uh, reticle is nice. Um, not necessarily as good for like CQB on one power as uh, this reticle here or the Trijicon AccuPowers reticle, but uh, still usable. And uh, if you want insanely clear glass, that's a good route to go. I know they have the 1 to 10 out now. I haven't used that one. Um, when I was in the military and stuff like that, it was always the 1 to 6, but uh, I'm sure the 1 to 10 is excellent as well. And I'm sure it costs an arm and a leg. All right, I kind of hope that uh, explained why I changed over to the Atoball on my main rifle that I shoot. And um, hopefully this gives you some ideas on uh, maybe what to purchase on your next rifle or something like that. Also, I give recommendations for equipment or optics or whatever all the time. And oftentimes I'll say things like, I hate the um, ACOG or whatever. And while my opinion may be that the ACOG is outdated and overpriced and stuff like that, I'm not telling you that if you have an ACOG, you should get rid of it and get something else. If it works, it works and that's fine. What I'm giving that advice for, the reason behind that, is that in 2021, someone shouldn't go out and buy an ACOG new for $700, however much, um, to mount on their gun um, in this day and age. If you have one and like you've had one for forever, that's all right, and that's kind of like, um, there's a higher <clears throat> bar to get over to like, okay, now I gotta get rid of this and get something else. But uh, if you're starting from scratch, you can get the best bang for your buck on the market, and something like an ACOG isn't gonna be that. Something like a Trijicon AccuPower is not gonna be that. This is gonna be much more bang for your buck. Even prices, if the prices were the same, it would be more bang for your buck, but, um, Anyway, so that's kind of where my uh, thought process comes from and uh, where my recommendations are coming from. Hopefully that kind of makes sense and uh, yeah, take care. Remember, if you like the video, others might too. Make sure you hit the like button and smash that fucking subscribe button like this.